Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today I'm going to bring you an update which is related to some news going on right now around the troubling discussion of international digital tax. Just in the last few days we've had Janet Yellen be named the Treasury Secretary of the US and she is collaborating with uh, UK, with Germany, a bunch of other countries but in particular Germany and UK is where the conversations have been around bringing in an international digital tax, okay? So this is going to largely be targeted around Facebook, Google, et cetera, but invariably is going to spill out from there. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the tax creep. I'm gonna talk a little bit about, you know, the general idea here and, you know, how it might affect you and how you should probably be planning around it depending on the business that you're in. Uh, as well as I think just what it tells us about the state of the world today and, uh, you know, that's a whole other whole other conversation. So we'll get into that. All right, before we do that though, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, make sure you don't miss out on any of our videos. We try to produce great content for you every single day. And if you're at all interested in help with international tax planning, with how to pay the lowest legal amount of tax possible to save those precious dollars which you've earned and put them back into your pocket or keep the government from taking them with their thieving hands out of your pocket, um, or interested in asset protection, international company formation, bank accounts, residency, citizenships, where to move, international, like uh, unofficial citizenships, any of that kind of stuff, please reach out to me. You can book a call, clarity.fm forward slash Michael Ross, we're happy to help you. And you can check out our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com, where you can send us a message. Okay, well, let's dive in. So uh, there's been talk about this for a while now. There has been obviously a lot of attention given to the big tech companies about how they you know, make tons and tons and tons of profit and pay very little tax. And you know, this has led countries in places like Spain to institute a so-called Google tax. We've had a few countries, Spain, France, Italy, I think UK, uh, India, a bunch of countries have started bringing in these taxes to go after those types of companies, okay? Now, at this point in time, it's mostly been restricted. For example, if we look at what they've done in Spain, it's 750 million euros a year with 3 million euros of local revenue in order to have this affect them. But inevitably, the way that it works is these things start that way and then they creep. And I'm gonna start by saying that I actually am deeply concerned about the concentration of power that the big tech companies have. And I'm deeply concerned about whether, you know, using something like Instagram or Facebook, et cetera, is actually good for you, actually good for society. I'm not particularly sure it is. Obviously, I have to love YouTube because, you know, we're here. But, uh, but in general, like, I think that there's arguments against all that stuff. However, I don't think that the way to deal with that is to say, hey, listen, let's go and get our grubby hands on it with tax dollars. I think this is like a classic government thing where, for instance, hey, listen, cigarettes, smoking is unhealthy for you. You know what we're going to do? We're not going to focus on making people healthier. No, that would be, you know, too proactive. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to tax it. Now, there's an argument you can make for taxing it because you have health care costs and things like this, right? But in general, I think governments love to tax things because they're always looking for more money. And in this case, that's your money, right? Which is terrible. So we see this with things like photo radar, right? Photo radar doesn't make things any safer, but it generates more tax revenue. So people go and, you know, hence get taxed. It's like an indirect tax, right? You can say, oh, you know, it's a fine. It's a tax, right? It's a tax. Okay, so what, is this, uh, what does this mean for the world today? So I, I first of all, I wanna kind of just think about kind of the global coordination mechanisms that are happening. I have mentioned in a couple of videos that we're starting to see some breakdown of that. We saw a little bit with Brexit. We saw a little bit with uh, under the Trump administration. Certainly Biden is much more of a globalist than Trump was, you know. Uh, we are seeing some cases where uh, Italy, uh, Portugal, Greece, etc., are starting to make their tax systems more favorable to try and attract people. And I think we'll continue to see that trend. We will continue to see tax competition. We're going to see these two pulling forces. One is, you know, hey, listen, the kind of developed Western countries trying to get more tax dollars. And we're going to see these other countries saying, hey, listen, we're wanting to compete. So we're going to try and kind of break away from that. Okay, so fair enough. Fair enough. But when we look at what's bringing this together, I think what you can see is that the US is concerned that they're gonna lose tax dollars to UK, to France, et cetera. And that's driving, this self-interest is driving coordination. So I actually think it's very likely 
that sometime, probably in 2021, we're going to see the implementation of an international digital tax, okay? Uh, at first, like I said, it probably will only affect these really major companies, but the way that things work is, you know, either inflation gets your numbers up there over time, or they start to say, oh, hey, let's, you know, expand the area that this tax covers. And so I think that's not especially good, right? So the question that this brings out is, what is it that we can do about this? Now, again, right now, most people watching this channel are not gonna be affected by it, so it's not that big a deal. But I do think that we can start to think in terms of something that a lot of people don't really think of, which is how you characterize income and how income gets uh, classified. So I'll give you an example. Uh, if you're in certain parts of the world, they will tax income and then they'll lay a whole bunch of socials on top, right? On the other hand, if you had rental income, let's say, you know, some space in your house, some equipment you have, et cetera, that doesn't get socials added on top, right? So by simply saying, hey, listen, you know, pay me a little bit for my time and pay me a lot for my computer, you know, you can change that balance, right? Similarly, we've seen this in the US where taxes have been quite high, et cetera, people end up finding other ways, right? They say, okay, great, I'm gonna find ways to increase my expenses. I'm going to find ways to defer. I'm going to find ways to take that income and it, consider it you know, capital gains income as opposed to regular income. What I see this being is that more and more and more, there's going to be an opportunity to take advantage of uh, gaining value from the increase in the equity of things, okay? We see this with crypto. We have seen this with tech companies that have grown very fast, right? Where did you know, these tech founders make all their money? It wasn't on the profits of the company. The profits of their companies wouldn't have been taxed because there was no profits in a lot of cases, right? Now, when they bring in a minimum tax, it's a little bit different, but that, uh, that's the case. On the flip side, the value of the company goes way, way up. So I think from a personal wealth building standpoint, from a wealth preservation, et cetera standpoint, what we should be thinking about is we should be saying, hey, listen, what are some ways that we can adjust our income so that that income is more reflective of a tax favorable environment? And there's all kinds of different ways you can do that. You can do it in most countries of the world. And yeah, it could be something that is terribly helpful for you. So anyway, the point is, this is going to require over the next number of years being more strategic and uh, probably more clever as well as you know, making it more and more favorable to move. So I think for me, things that I'm considering is, okay, great, where should residency permits be? Uh, where do you wanna be in terms of setting up substance for your business? Can you structure your business such that the income is not considered to be a type of income that's taxable, right? Can you attach, and I've seen some of this with uh, some clients, it's like, okay, great, hey, let's attach something service-based to something digital in order to recharacterize it so that we can adjust accordingly. So lots of different fancy things you can do there that will help you with optimizing your company. So I guess the point is, I get a lot of people who reach out to me where the idea is basically, where are you gonna form a company? Where you form a company is only a small part of the picture. It's important to realize, okay, where are your operations? How is it that you're setting up, structuring your, the relationship between yourself and your business, between different businesses that you're doing business with? Is this royalties income, is it not? What are the withholding tax consequences, et cetera? So anyway, all of that is, it's a little bit complicated now, it's probably gonna be more complicated in the future, but it is something that uh, if you care about building wealth and wealth preservation, I think it's worth being aware of how these rules play out because the reality is if you're taxed all along the way, you're gonna have a lot less to show for it than if you can somehow say defer that tax and maybe pay a small amount of tax at the end. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, reach out to me, uh, put some comments below, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you think about this, you know, international digital tax, are you concerned about it? Is it gonna affect your business in the next five or 10 years, do you think? Is it something, where are you looking at moving? How are you looking at building wealth, et cetera? And yeah, we'd love to hear from you about that. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, we love subscribers, thank you so much. Hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on any future videos. Check out our other videos, share them with your friends if it's good, give it a thumbs up. If you're not, please tell me why, and I'm gonna see you guys on the next video.